Hey, man. What you doing? Haven't you heard? I'm cool now. What? Yeah, I got a tattoo, so... I'm cool now. I don't think that's how it works. Mm, I'm pretty sure that's how it works. And even if it's not, what is cool is the amount of time and effort that I put into researching how the heck tattoos are permanent in the first place, which I am now going to tell you about in great detail. So being a scientifically minded person, I was not gonna go into this without a thorough amount of research as per usual. And it turns out we didn't actually know that much about the nitty gritty details of how this works until 2018. Because when you think about it, it's sort of incredible that tattoos are permanent. Like pretty much everything we put in our bodies is temporary. It gets excreted by our elimination system or it gets broken down by our metabolic system or our immune system or just disposed of somehow or reconstituted into something else. There are very few examples of stuff that we add to our bodies that sticks around forever. And I think the most familiar and common of those examples are tattoos. Just a heads up, I will be including some footage in this video of me actually getting my tattoo. It includes close-ups of the tattoo needle and there are some small traces of blood. So if that freaks you out, never fear. I will be putting a counter on the screen every time before I'm about to um, have a clip play. So keep an eye on your screen and it'll be like an eight second countdown before that shows. So if you don't want to see it, you can look away and just listen. When I very first started thinking about getting a tattoo, all I knew was that a needle injects some ink into a layer of your skin. And that was it. Also somewhere in the back of my head, I knew that our skin is like coming off all the time. Like, in fact, a majority of the dust around your house is your old dead skin that's been shed off of your body as fresh new skin cells are generated. Yeah. So I was like, how does a tattoo not come off as your skin renews itself? And part of this answer is because the tattoo ink is technically not in a skin cell at all. And this is where we have to get into the layers of your skin. So you are shedding skin cells all the time, up to a million a day, but that's from the very top layer of your skin. It's called the epidermis. This has several layers of its own. It's kind of like a very complicated cake. And on top, we have squamous cells. These are flat cells that fit really closely together and form a protective layer that acts as a barrier. And this is one of the ways that your skin protects you from stuff that shouldn't get into your body. These cells and your skin in general are part of your immune system. Squamous cells are part of lots of the different surfaces in and on your body, like they make up the lining of your capillaries and various body cavities and organs. And at the very bottom of the epidermis are your basal cells, which are actually a kind of stem cell. And this is where new skin cells are generated. So as the top layers of your epidermis die and fall off those squamous cells, your basal cells are at the bottom generating a new layer of cells to move up and take their place. The basal cells are also where your melanocytes are. These are the cells that produce pigment and that give your skin its particular color. One of the coolest things about all of this is that there's actually still so much that science doesn't understand about this layer. Like exactly how basal cells produce slash become new cells is still kind of hazy. And understanding more about this could be really key to understanding more about the development of certain cancers and human cellular function in general, which is pretty cool. Now, all of that is happening just in the epidermis, the top 0 0.05 to 1.5 millimeters of your skin. The thickness of the epidermis depends on where in the body we're talking about, like the skin on the backs of your hands is much thinner than the skin on the soles of your feet, for example. And the next layer down underneath the epidermis is the dermis. This layer contains some blood vessels as well as sweat glands, hair follicles, immune cells, the tips of some nerves. And this is the layer the tattoo needle is injecting the ink into. So that's why your tattoo doesn't come off as those epidermis skin cells are being shed because the ink is in the layer underneath. 
And it takes real skill for an artist to get the right depth of the needle as they tattoo you. Too shallow and your tattoo will fade much faster as your skin renews itself because it's in that epidermal layer. Too deep and you're likely to have a lot more inflammation. And the ink may bleed and leak outside of the intended design. This is something called tattoo blowout. Blowout can be caused by a lot of different things, but one reason is that the ink is injected too far down into that hypodermis, the layer that is mostly fat. So here the ink has nothing to hold on to or like no firm matrix of skin cells to keep it in place. So it just kind of splooges over time. Okay, so getting the ink into the correct layer of skin is part of the answer, but tattoo ink is a foreign substance. So how does your immune system not like freak out and try to get rid of it? Turns out it kind of does, or at least it tries. And it's freak out is actually a key part of why your tattoo is permanent. When you push a sharp object like a tattoo needle into the body, it is technically a physical trauma, albeit a very small one. And when this poking happens over and over as part of a tattoo, your body treats this area like a wound, and it sends immune cells to the area to start repairing your skin and protecting you from infection. That's one of the reasons that tattoos can get sort of like red and sore and swollen. That's your immune system trying to fix it. Also, I know people are gonna ask what my tattoo is, and I'm happy to tell you it is a tarot card. It's the Three of Swords card in reverse. My tattoo artist was actually very concerned that I didn't know I was getting it upside down, and I was like, no, I promise. It's on purpose. If you're interested in its meaning, you can look up the general gist of what the Three of Swords card in reverse means, um, but the personal meaning to me is private, so I won't share any more than that. And if you have an opinion about my tattoo that doesn't necessarily seem very nice, I would appreciate it if you kept it to yourself. Okay, thanks. One key kind of immune cell that responds to this job is called a macrophage. They're a white blood cell. And there are actually eight different kinds or flavors of white blood cells. They're all part of your immune system. And each of them has a little bit of a different job. Your macrophage's job is to go around like a Pac-Man, swallowing bad stuff like damaged cells or pathogens like bacteria and viruses, and generally anything that's just like not supposed to be there. Macrophages engulf these foreign entities and then break them down using a little pocket inside of itself called a lysosome. It's filled with chemicals that can break down foreign objects. It's kind of like dissolving something in acid to get rid of it, only like on a molecular scale. Macrophages are often residents of specific tissues. They stick to one area and keep the neighborhood streets clean, so to speak. And macrophages don't just take out the trash, they also snitch. Because they present information about the foreign substance to another kind of white blood cell called your lymphocytes. And your lymphocytes are what remember this information from your macrophages and they travel away from that specific neighborhood through your bloodstream to the rest of your body, passing this information along so that if you encounter that substance again, anywhere in your body, your immune system can recognize it and attack it and get rid of it right away. So this is where we need to make a small detour into the world of tattoo ink. Tattooing is a cultural practice that's been around for literal centuries, and depending on where in the world you look, tattoo ink used to be made out of charred bone, charred wood, pen ink, and in some cases, even processed blood. Today, Tattoo ink is actually not federally regulated in the United States and in some other places. And this means that the requirements for tattoo ink quality and safety and ingredients varies wildly from state to state. And so do the requirements for a tattoo artist or the parlor owner to give you a complete and honest answer if you ask what's in the ink that they're using, which is not a great thought. But for the most part, most tattoo ink is typically made of the same synthetic pigments that have been approved for safe use in foods, cosmetics, and medical devices. Many of them are a carbon-based pigment in some kind of carrier substance with other preservatives and additives, so it's definitely not just one thing. And when that whole complex of stuff is injected into your dermis, your immune system gets to work. 
it actually does get rid of some of it. Like your blood and lymph do carry away some of your tattoo ink. So if you have tattoos, you probably have some ink in your lymph nodes right now. This is also part of the reason your tattoo will start to flake after a few days. Your skin's immune system has successfully pushed out some of the ink, and as those superficial needle entry point wounds scab and fall off, so does that extruded ink, leaving you with your final look. But inside the dermis, macrophages are rushing to the site of the disturbance and swallowing up that foreign substance, the tattoo ink. But for some reason, the macrophages can't destroy the ink. They're just like holding it inside themselves and sitting tight. A team at MIT only recently discovered this behavior, giving us more of an answer to the mechanics of how tattoos are permanent than we've ever had before. But the thing is, we still don't fully understand why your macrophages can't digest and get rid of tattoo ink. Some scientists think it's because the ink molecules are actually too big for the macrophage to like fit inside its lysosome and break down. Some others think that maybe it's the contents of the macrophage's lysosome, like that acid that, if you will, actually isn't capable of breaking the ink down. It's designed to break down stuff like bacteria and viruses, and it can't attack tattoo ink. Maybe it's both. Plus, macrophages aren't that long lived. Like your skin cells, they're also dying and being replaced by new, fresh macrophages produced by your bone marrow. So where does the ink those dead macrophages were holding onto go? The MIT team also explored this and they found that when those original macrophages retire, they basically spit out the ink they were holding onto. They don't take it with them, they hand it off to the new macrophage that's taking their place. And that new macrophage is like right there to swallow it up and hold on to it. They're passing the baton. It's like they don't know what to do with it, so they just hold on to it and hand it off to the next shift, like. Hey man, congratulations on a great career. I'm gonna take things from here. <gasps> what is that? To be honest, I do not know. I, okay, well, what do I do with it? I told you, I don't know. I don't know. Just hold on to it forever. Okay, I'm leaving. Bye. <laughs> what? And even though they can't destroy the ink, the macrophages holding on to this intruder are still telling the rest of your immune system about it. Like those lymphocytes are coming over, checking out the situation, and then traveling through the rest of your body, letting your immune system know how to be on the lookout for more tattoo ink. This means that the next time you get a tattoo, your immune system may be more effective at getting rid of more of the ink, meaning the more tattoos you get, the lighter they may end up being after they've healed. But this is only really if you get the exact same tattoo ink injected, and also the data on this is pretty light, so we're not really sure about that. An anthropologist has also published several studies in the last few years about any connection between tattoos and an individual's level of certain immune proteins. And you may have seen these headlines. The media went kind of like wild with it, coming up with all kinds of articles about how tattoos could fight the common cold by boosting your immune system. But I read these papers and the truth is that even though this anthropologist came to some interesting conclusions about like sociocultural habits around tattooing, the immunological data is kind of a mess and it does not imply any significant connection between tattoos and immune molecule levels. So I would disregard that information if you've seen it anywhere. In fact, the only thing we really know for sure about tattoos and the immune system, besides what I've already talked about in this video, is that if you have any kind of immunological deficiency like an autoimmune disease or you're taking steroids, you probably shouldn't get a tattoo because it is a wound, and if infection is high risk for you, you definitely don't want to be purposefully opening the door for potential pathogens to just waltz in. And I hope more scientists look into this immune interaction with tattoo biochemistry area of science, because I think there's still some pretty cool stuff to find out. Long story short, the fact is, if we live to be old enough that our skin, and therefore our tattoos, get wrinkly and saggy, and how lucky, right? Like, what a privilege. Any of us could die tomorrow, so I, I don't know. 
if you do live to be old and wrinkly, don't you want to have used and decorated your body to make you happy? Especially while it was young and supple. You know, do what makes you feel the most like you. But also maybe sit with your design for a couple months at least, just to make sure it's really what you want. And get to know your tattoo artist, please. If you guys want more like tips and tricks or if you wanna have an FAQ about, you know, what I did before getting my first tattoo just on a more logistics level, let me know. Uh, thanks for watching. And in the immortal words of TikTok user, don't be sad, go get a tattoo. Don't be sad, go get a tattoo. Don't be sad, go get a tattoo. Don't be sad, go.